not mad. Welcome to our kitchen cave here at El Sietimo Cielo in beautiful Umbria. Today we're going to be making a whole bunch of crostinis for Christmas. So let's see how many we can get done in about half an hour. So the first one we're going to do is, uh, first crostini is going to be um, a liver pate, which is super popular here in Italy. You'll find it in Tuscany everywhere and all through Umbria too. Uh, it's very easy to put together and it's really delicious, so let's get going. I've got a hot pan with some olive oil in it and I'm going to hit it with some onions and get the onions going. It's just one onion cut up. I'm going to get that rolling nicely now. Uh, I've got the heat on high, I want to get things really, really cooking. Get myself something to stir it with. How about that? So the onions are rolling. Livers. I've taken all the skins off and I've taken all the sinew out and any little gallbladder or brown spots that you see. I also got some hearts in there with that too, uh, so I'm going to add those. So the livers just go in. And get those rolling. So with all those, uh, I want to get those rolling, get those kind of browning a little bit. So while that's happening, let's make a couple quick ones while the chicken livers are rolling and the onions are happening and browning up. We'll take crostini, it's just simple bread that we've toasted so it's nice and golden brown. And a couple of flavors that go really well together are gorgonzola and poached pear. So I poached some pears in red wine with uh, some sugar, some cinnamon. I put a couple of chai tea bags in there to flavor it. And you just uh, poach them off until they're knife tender. Uh, super delicious and great for Christmas too. So we'll put one of those down. Uh, I've got some gorgonzola here. So let's take a little piece of gorgonzola. Get that going. That looks awesome. That's easy. Poached pear. I mean, simple, super delicious. You do one. Yeah. So they're starting to get a little color on them, and that's what we want. Looking good. Looking good. Let's do something that's a real classic flavor here in Italy. Rapini. Rapini is a uh, kind of a bitter green that uh, is used in a lot of pasta dishes and it teams up really well with Italian sausage. And uh, for this one, we're going to do a more classic idea where we take crostini, we're going to take a clove of garlic, whoops, just a clove of raw garlic, and rub the toasted bread, and that's going to give it a really wicked garlic flavor. Um, easy as that. I have some rapini that I've wilted down here uh, with some salt and pepper and then squeezed out the moisture. Put some of that on. Super nice green. So I've got the rapini on that I wilted down. Now I'm going to put a little bit of olive oil on it. Just a smidge. There we go. Sausage. I grilled this off. It's really nice Italian sausage. And this can be served at room temperature, it's not a big deal. Rapini and Italian sausage. Super good. Oh yeah. So now you can see the liver's really, really nice. Got some color on it. Next thing we're gonna add in is capers and anchovy. A really neat flavor with liver. A couple of tape, or a kind of tablespoon of capers and uh, two anchovies that have been rinsed, it's all packed in. So now things are really rolling. What it needs is a little bit of brandy. So off the flame, add a glog. There we go. Brandy. Put that down. Now, white wine. Now add about a quarter of a cup. We're gonna let that simmer in and the red wine cook, or the white wine cook out and uh, cook the livers through. Now the livers are looking good, nice and brown. So 
the wine is cooked down one more batch of wine, about a quarter of a cup. And that's just going to finish cooking everything up and add more flavor. Pepper. Yep. Salt. Don't need a ton of salt because of the capers. That's going to cook out. Almost there right now. Matter of fact, I think that's good. Livers are almost cooked and falling apart. We're going to let that a little while longer just to sniff more wine. While that's happening, I'm going to get this one going on the back here. And I'm going to add some guanciale, which is cured pork cheek. Better than bacon, really porky flavor. I've diced it up, you can see. It's pretty fatty, but the flavor is in the fat. It's awesome. So all I'm going to do is pop this into a pan and start browning it up. And we're going to use that on another crustine. This stuff is good. I'll let that keep going. Turn the heat down on the livers a little bit. So, livers are still cooking. Real one chali is working. I'm just going to move it around here with my finger just so I can brown it evenly. So while all of that is happening, turn this right down. While that's happening, we're going to go over and make a couple other crostinis. So, next one I'm going to make is super delicious. We'll take a couple, we'll take our garlic, we'll give it a rub down, nice garlic flavor. Give this one a rub down too. Prosciutto, everybody's favorite prosciutto. This time I'm going to tee it up with some of this awesome fig preserve that's made right here on the property from the fig trees. And uh, I'm going to make sure everything's working along here. I'm going to take a little bit of this fig preserve and I'm going to put it on, on top. I'm going to do two because prosciutto is awesome. So, garlic, fig preserve. Prosciutto, nice, thinly sliced. Don't buy it if it's sliced thick, because thick sliced prosciutto is not where it's at. It's got to be sliced thin, so there's lots of surface area, lots of flavor. I'm piling it on pretty richly. Now I have some wild arugula that I picked off the property. Super strong and peppery. It's going to go really, really nicely with the fig preserve and prosciutto. Put some more on there. Peppery. Awesome. And that's that one. One challenge. Browning up really nicely. The flavor of this is just so great. I mean, it really is. It's not smoked, but it's pork. Again, they're nice and caramelized. You can see them all caramelized. Just a bit of liquid left in the pan. We're just going to cook that right down until the livers are just falling apart. I think this guanciale is ready to go. Yeah. Put that to the side. Turn that off. So, with the guanciale, while well, that is still nice and warm and still browning, we'll go back and we'll do another crostini over here. Again, taking my crostini, going to rub it with some fresh garlic. You can see my garlic cloves getting down, it's like grating cheese. There we go, rubbed it down. So what I've got here is some great little organic white beans that I picked up. I soaked them overnight and I cooked them in a bit of stock and tomato with garlic and bay leaf and they're just falling apart now and just beautiful. Room temperature with this one is the way I like it too. And uh, I'm going to take some of these great beans. I'm going to put them on my crostini. Crostini again. A few of these. I just crush them with the back of the spoon. And these are full of flavor. I've seasoned them up with a bit of salt already, but I'm going to put a little bit more salt. But the guanciale is salty too, so we don't have to really get crazy with the salt. Beans on toast. A <laughs> classic. Grab my guanciale. It's nice and caramelized. Yummy. I need a spoon. It's still warm. And oh yeah. Bit of the fat on there too. Oh yeah. 
So, beans on toast with guanciale. One of my favorites, I'm telling you. That is awesome right there. What are we gonna do next? Let's finish the chicken liver. Go back to the chicken liver. So here we go. Chicken livers have absorbed all the uh, wine. They're cooked through completely. I checked them, they're not pink anymore. So they're ready to be blended into the pate. If you have never tried chicken liver, this is an awesome thing to try. It's delicious and it's not livery, it's really good. So, food processor, take the lid off. I'm gonna scrape them in here. Make sure you scrape the pat out in there. That looks good. Lid on and pulse. Have a look. Oh yeah. Scrape it down. One more shot, I'm gonna put a little olive oil in too. Where's my olive oil? Yep. Put it back on. Spoon. Let's taste it, make sure it's got enough salt. It should because of the capers. More pepper, just a squeeze more salt. The wine is so good. Done. So that's what you're gonna end up with. Pate of liver, super delicious. Let's go and put one on a crostini. Same thing, we'll take two. There's our garlic again, let's add a little bit extra flavor. Quick rub down, super nice. Some of the pate. Yes, I'm using my fingers, but it's all good. Get your fingers in there too. And since it's a little brown, yeah, always a little more olive oil. That's so good. Yeah. And since it's so brown, we're gonna add a little bit of parsley. I just picked it out of the garden to brighten things up a little bit. Yep, that's it. Done. Liver pate. That's another one that's just, you're going to love that. It's one of my favorites. I love it. And you can serve it warm, you can serve it at room temperature, whatever you like. All right, what are we going to do next? Take a couple pieces of crostini, again, that we've toasted. They're nice and dry and crispy. And let's do a classic, caprese salad. So since it's December, the basil's done. I don't know how many fresh basil. So what I'm gonna do is use a little bit of pesto that I have. So I'm gonna take the pesto, again, let's give a little rub of garlic, because the more the merrier, right? More garlic, more garlic. Nice shot of pesto on top of it. It's gonna give us the basil flavor. Oh. I hear a cat. All right, there's our basil flavor. Now tomato, oh, I had some great tomatoes to use here. I'm gonna take a few bocconcini, which everybody knows, which is fresh mozzarella. And let's just slice them into little thin pieces. Yeah. And then layer it up. I mean, it's really easy. Nice little layer of bocconcini. A tomato, a couple pieces of bocconcini, and a tomato. Do the same over here. Fresh mozzarella, piece of tomato, a couple pieces of mozzarella, tomato, finish it with more mozzarella maybe. Yeah, yeah, that's good. Olive oil, always just that flavor is so good. Come on in. I know you're in there. There it is. One. Perfect. We're gonna use a little bit of balsamic glaze. I love this stuff. Crema de balsamico. You can make your own or you can buy it in the store here very reasonably. Super nice. Adds a great flavor. So, caprese. A classic. And what's next? Let's try something sweet. 
A little sweet is always good. And this one is a, another classic pairing. No garlic. Take two crostini. Ricotta. Nice, creamy, fresh ricotta. Take a nice piece of ricotta. Oh, yeah. Come here. Onto the crostini. Don't be shy. Look at that. Next, pine nuts. I've toasted up some pine nuts. <clears throat> nice and golden brown. Throw the pine nuts on top. More. So, ricotta, pine nuts, honey. Honey and cheese, pine nuts, phenomenal. I've got some great local honey here. Whoa, it's thick. Because it's kind of cold. And I'm going to put a nice little smear of honey on top. Just a little bit. I don't want to go crazy, but there, that's good. So there's a little bit of a sweet crostini, kind of, kind of sweet, but also just delicious. Goes in here. So artichoke. I love artichokes. They're happening right now. There's tons of them in the market. So what I've done is I've taken them and I've turned them down, and I've sliced up some fresh artichoke here. So same thing. A couple crostini. I think I'm going to use more of this ricotta, just enough as a base. I'm not going to use garlic because on this one the artichokes have a subtle flavor. I don't want to obscure the subtle flavor of the artichoke. So there's some ricotta. Here's the fresh artichoke that I've done. Hi Nord. There's the cat. I'm going to just layer on some artichoke. Now. A really interesting flavor combination with artichoke is mint. And we have lots of mint in the garden here, so I thought of this. And uh, I've had pasta with artichoke and mint. I've even had pizza with artichoke and mint. And it is an amazingly good combination. Um, what I am going to do on this one is hit it with a bit of salt. That's enough. So, artichoke. Olive oil and mint. Where's my mint? Here it is. Fresh from the garden again. I'm just going to give it a quick hacking with the knife. You don't go crazy here. We just. That's it. Cat is sitting over here looking at me, waiting for a treat. But I don't think it's going to want an artichoke and mint with a little bit of ricotta and olive oil. That's a really good one. Something completely different. It's going to freak people out a bit, but I think you're going to like that one a lot. Okay, so we're ready for our next crostini, and this one's really good. Uh, this is using mortadella, uh, one of my favorite meats uh, for putting on a sandwich. And it's referred to sometimes as mortadella smear or mortadella pate or mortadella spread. Um, really easy, do it all in the food processor. Let's do it. So I've got some mortadella here that I've already diced up. Uh, no pistachios in this one, it's just a pure mortadella, really flavorful. Bit of pepper, I'm put that in the food processor. Easy. Lid on. Going. Once it's starting to look like a puree, right about there, you're going to add in some whipped cream. It's a little fat. Just like that. Top off this. And I'm going to use, for that much mortadella, I'm going to use about half a cup. In. Fresh pepper. Just a touch of salt because the meat's already salty. Just for the cream. That's it. Two twists. Back on. Bring this together. Well, that's going 
going, I'm heating up some olive oil over here, and that's going to be for the garnish. I'm going to get that olive oil nice and hot. You want to bring this down to a nice puree. Another look at that. Needs a little bit more whipped cream to make it go. Because it was quite a bit of mortadella, this will be enough to do a lot of crostinis. Although we're only going to set up. There it is. So you really want to let that go. This is almost hot, so what we're going to do in this olive oil is fry up some sage leaves to garnish this. I'm going to let that keep going because I want it to puree. It's almost there. So you want to get the olive oil so it's almost smoking hot. Still got a second to go on that, so let's have another look at this. Yeah. Just a little while longer. So we're going to take our sage leaves. I'm going to test the oil here. Fresh sage leaves from the garden. I just washed them, dried them, and test the oil. We're not there yet. Mortadella mousse, nicely pureed and smooth, really good, a little bit of pepper. Couldn't be simpler than that, could it? So we're going to put that over here. So the oil is nice and hot now. The olive oil you can see is about a half an inch, maybe a quarter of an inch. Just enough to fry these, these nice fresh sage leaves up. And all we're going to do is slide them in. It's going to take 20 seconds. Not even. Oh, the smell is super nice. So there they go. I've got a spatula ready to take them out. I'll just move them around a bit. And all we want to do is fry them until they get a little bit crisp. Which you'll see right now as they finish up. And we're going to use this to garnish the mortadella. That's it. They're done. All right, our mortadella spread is ready. Our smear is ready to go. Got a couple crostinis, a game of the garlic. We're on our second huge clove. Rubber down. Go in. Grab some mortadella spread. Oh, I don't think you can put too much of this on. Well, that might be too much. Put out a nice smear. Now, what goes well with mortadella? Other than our fried sage, what we're going to put on? Pistachios. Take some pistachios, roughly chop them. Good. Sprinkle on some pistachios. Yeah. I'm going to put a ribbon of balsamic, just a tiny, tiny bit of the balsamic reduction. And finish it off whoa, with some of our fried sage leaves. Crispy. Oh, yeah. Unreal. That looks good. So, mortadella smear with pistachios, fried sage leaves. Let's do two more, I think. I think I can do two more here. Uh, take a couple of crostini. This one is going to be with roasted eggplant, which I roasted up yesterday. Super nice and soft. I just, I actually threw this one in the fire, wrapped in foil, and just kept turning it until it was soft and cooked through. So there's my roasted eggplant. Let's just give it a really quick chop. Just, it almost doesn't need chopping. It's just like. You know, goes well with roasted eggplant, roasted garlic, same thing, wrap it in foil, put it in the fireplace till it's soft. There it is. Squeeze the cloves, roasted garlic like pate. I'm going to take that, I'm going to mix it in. Go back there. What it needs, a bit of salt. No salt in this. That should do it. A bit of pepper. I love pepper. Crostini, 
No garlic needed on this one because there's tons of it in there. And since we're using roasted everything in this one, look at that, looks great. I'm going to use roasted red pepper that I did yesterday too. Same thing, threw it right in the fireplace until the skins turn black, peel the skins off. Delicious cooked roasted red pepper right on top. Right on top. Ooh. That brings out the color. And maybe just a tiny bit of parsley to give it that Italian look. It goes well with it too. Roasted eggplant with roasted garlic. Roasted red pepper, a little bit of parsley. Hey, let's finish that with some of that awesome olive oil. Just a ribbon, come on. There it is. A few drops. Love it. Great. So, can we do a couple more? Let's take our pate. I'm just going to put that over here. I think we can. This one was taught to me by a friend of mine from Emilia Romagna. It's really delicious. It's really ridiculously easy, but it's super good. So, crostinis. Throw them down with garlic. Oh yeah. Hard boiled eggs. Put the eggs in cold water, put them on the stove, bring it to a simmer, 10 minutes. Take them off the stove, run them under cold water. Perfect hard boiled eggs every time. Got two hard boiled eggs here. Gonna use a fork. Gonna use some more olive oil. Well, good. And just crush up the eggs. So olive oil, eggs. This is so simple. It's ridiculous. I have got a piece of pecorino here. You probably use Parmigiano since it's from Emilia Romagna, but. I didn't bring any. I've got this nice piece of pecorino. So, pecorino. Oh, about that much. Yep. Salt. Pepper. And for some color. Parsley, this time. A tablespoon, just to give it some color. And the flavor is excellent also. So, egg, olive oil, parsley, salt, pepper, more olive oil. Yeah. Got a crostini already rubbed with garlic. And this is ready. Egg, olive oil, cheese, garlic. I mean, this is so good. Wow, look at that. Made a bit of a mess at the end, but that's okay. We're finished. How many did we do? 11? Caprese salad. Tomato bocconcini, a little bit of balsamic reduction. Gorgonzola with red wine poached pear, super nice. Rapini and Italian sausage, a classic combination. Again, rubbed down with garlic. Big preserve with prosciutto and wild arugula, I love it. Nice white beans cooked in tomato sauce with garlic, cooked down until they're nice and soft. And then I'm serving it with guanciale, fried up nice and crispy, delicious porky flavor, pork and beans, can't go wrong. The classic liver pate. Tuscany, Umbria, all over Italy. It's everywhere. It's phenomenal. Ricotta with pine nuts and honey, a sweet alternative on your crostinis. Artichoke and mint with a little bit of ricotta underneath it. Fantastic. People are going to freak out when they taste that one. The mortadella smear, that's my favorite. Fried sage, pistachios, balsamic vinegar. It's, that's excellent. Roasted garlic, roasted eggplant, roasted red pepper, a little bit of parsley, awesome. 
the simplest Emilia Romagna, egg salad, olive oil, Parmigiano or, or Grana Padano, a little bit of parsley, salt and pepper. There's your crostinis for Christmas. So that's it. We did 11 crostinis. They all look delicious. You're ready for your Christmas party. My name's Tim. I'm from A Cook Not Mad. Check out our website at cooknotmad.com. Say goodbye now from Umbria here in our awesome kitchen cave. Thanks for joining me. Happy holidays.